Hello, I'm Scott Milliken. I'm the lead developer for OpenDCIM, which is an open source version of a data center infrastructure management uh, software application. Today we're going to talk about one of the new features in version 3.2, which is the addition of images to devices. Uh, the way that we do this is uh, we um, put image uh, we attach an image to a device template. So if you have not been using device templates in your prior versions of OpenDCIM, uh, if you want to have pretty pictures, uh, you're going to have to start using templates for those. Okay. So what do I mean by um, the images and uh, templates? Well, let's just take a look here at our installation. So I'll go into one of my cabinets that's already built out with uh, systems that have images on them. So when I go into this cabinet, you'll see that I've got some, you know, various devices here, uh, and they've already got these nice, really pretty pictures on them. Okay, front side, rear side, uh, switch since it's in the opposite direction. Um, the front is actually the rear, and the rear is actually the front, um, and we keep track of that uh, through various means uh, as you uh, create your devices. So the number one question that's going to pop up is how do I get the pictures when I downloaded OpenDCIM it didn't have any well I am not allowed to redistribute the pictures the pictures came from either the manufacturers website so for instance if you go to Cisco you can download a Visio stencil for any one of their devices now they allow you to basically use that how you would like but I, you cannot redistribute them okay so that's why I can't distribute those with um, OpenDCIM Additionally, I can't pull directly from the stencil. You have to actually create a document that has the pictures, the front and the rear, uh, for a device, and then you have to um, use the snipping tool or some other screen grabbing tool um, to make individual images of the front side and the rear side of each object. So I may actually do a video showing just that portion, but um, I think a lot of people will probably be able to figure it out. Uh, another good resource to go to is Visio Cafe. Uh, VisioCafe.com is basically an aggregator for a lot of the uh, stencils that have been made available by the manufacturers. Now we are talking to some of the manufacturers um, that uh, are aware of OpenDCIM to see if we can get their permission to include uh, the images with our distribution. Uh, additionally, we have some people who are stating that um, they are uh, willing to take photographs of various models of uh, machines and uh, if they take a photograph and um, give us the rights to distribute it with OpenDCIM then that is 100 um, percent free of any copyright entanglements that there may be so um, but that answers the number one question that's going to be popping up with version 3.2 why can't you send me the pictures uh, and that is the reason why uh, it's called legal <laughs> All right, so um, let's talk about how you would actually um, work with these image files. Um, first of all, the way that you can upload them, there's two different ways. First, you can utilize uh, FTP or SCP to copy the pictures into your pictures folder underneath the OpenDCIM installation. Um, and that's the way that um, I would typically do it because I don't like setting up um, directories to necessarily be world writable or um, writable by the Apache process. Um, but if you do decide that you want to use the uh, image management feature that is part of 3.2, you go into the template management, uh, device image management section, and it'll allow you to select a file which will allow you to browse on your local directory or your local machine, and you can upload a file into um, the pictures folder. Um, you can see that I've already got quite a few uh, uploaded into here uh, for my sample and again these were just trimmed from uh, creating a Visio document um, now I do have some others that people have already uploaded to the opendcm.org website um, but they're actually pictures that have been put in so um, once we get a, a decent amount of those we will actually create a separate download um, that uh, you can use to um, download those pictures to your local uh, local site so let's assume that you've already got your pictures uploaded um, we're going to want to attach them to a device so what kind of device are we going to do well I'm picking the most difficult 
uh, possible so that hopefully after I've done this demonstration you'll be able to handle it for pretty much anything. Take a look here at the bottom of the screen and you'll see that I have a chassis device. It is an HP C7000 blade chassis and if we click on the chassis you'll see that I've got three different blades in here. I've got two front blades and I've got one rear blade. So um, we're going to pretty much run the gambit. First thing we need to do is edit the device template for the chassis device itself. Okay, so we select a picture file that corresponds to the chassis. So I've got someone who uploaded a front that's populated and a front that's not populated. So we're going to use the one that's not populated because we want to actually fill in the pictures. If I don't have a blade chassis that's absolutely full, then I don't want to show it as one that's full. I'd rather show it as one that um, only has partial uh, systems filled out. And then for the rear, we also need to choose that. And here's the rear. Now you notice once I added picture files on here, new buttons popped up under the chassis slots and rear chassis slots. That's to edit the coordinates. Now I've cheated. I've gone ahead and added, put in the coordinates and it saved it. I had simply blanked out the picture files so that you could see the difference. But if you click edit coordinates, it brings up a little uh, or brings up a little window with a picture of now this is the front that we're editing. So it brings up a picture of the front and the way that you can edit your coordinates. Okay, I've already got 8, 9, 10. So 11 would be the third one over. If I click edit for slot 11, then I can come over here and I can draw the region that corresponds to that particular slot. And here I can do number 12, etc. and so on. Now there is no save button here. That's because it doesn't save until you update the template. Okay, So same thing with the rear. I've already populated all the rear um, chassis slots here. As soon as I hit update template, then it will actually save all of those definitions. So let's take a look at how that has changed the way that our cabinet looks. Okay, All right, so now I've got a chassis with the front, and I've got a chassis with the rear, but it's just got text where those blades are supposed to be and that's because I have not attached pictures to those particular blades. However, it does fit the text in the correct spot for the blades. So let's go back over here to our template and let's edit the device for our BL460C Gen 8. So we have a front picture file for these blades but no rear because there's really only one side to the blades. So here's our server blade, and let's take a look at our flex fabric blade and get a picture in there for that. Okay, update. Now when we go to our data center, when we go to our cabinet, we will see that it's now populated two of those slots with the server image, and it's got the rear image over here and it's also a hot zone. So if I were to click on the flex fabric card on the rear image, it will actually take me to the flex fabric card so that I can modify um, the attributes of that particular device. So just another way to quickly uh, navigate into chassis devices. Now chassis devices can also be things like um, uh, several people have talked about having um, uh, modular patch panels. Uh, I happen to use those in my data center. I use the um, the uh, quick cartridges that go from an MTP cable in the rear to six LC OM4 fiber connections in the front. Uh, but it comes in a um, cartridge that you can fit three across uh, a one U um, blanking panel. So basically, my blanking panel I define as a chassis, and each one of the modules uh, gets defined as a slot occupant of those three and of course I could use LC, I could use SC, I could use any type of cartridge that fits in there and mix and match. So um, you know that's how you would do a modular patch panel. So just a couple more things here. Not everyone uh, cares for the images. Some people like the good old-fashioned labels only. If you click the labels but or the images button it will turn off the images and if you turn it back on here if you 
don't like the labels being on the pictures and you want just straight up pictures, you can turn off the labels that way. Okay. And uh, one more thing, you'll see this teeny tiny little icon up here. This is to pull up a print view. If you do that, then it will bring up basically an elevation that you can print of your device and you see everything is up here and you could either turn on or off the labels um, I think it honors that when you go to the print it does if you so yeah if you turn off the uh, labels and you want to print just the straight up elevation you can do that as well so this is not a global this is um, per browser so if I were to open this up in Firefox it would have complete it would not remember whatever selections I put here um, so it's not per user it's per browser session it's just a cookie that we set um, but that allows uh, people to change the behavior as to the way that they want to view things uh, because we try to make things as optional and flexible as possible so I hope this has been helpful and um, if you have any questions you can feel free to email the discussion mailing list there's a link on the opendcm.org website also, please remember that OpenDCIM uh, is a uh, uh, is dependent upon donations uh, from other people in order to pay our incidental expenses. Uh, we do have things like web hosting and domain registration, and in order to enter into things like non-disclosure agreements and other contracts, we have to um, uh, create a corporation. So there are some minor expenses related to that as well. So any uh, amount that you could uh, donate, we would certainly appreciate. And uh, I hope this has been helpful. And uh, check out the rest of the videos on our YouTube channel. And um, thanks a lot.